All right, folks, due to high demand, I now have an official merchandise store. By clicking the link in the description below, you can check out the wide array of stuff I have from shirts, sweatpants, hoodies, and even coffee mugs you can put your name on. All proceeds will go to my free youth athletic programs within my job, so please consider helping the cause. Thank you so much, and have a good day. This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Phantom Boxing, a brand new company starting in late 2019. They sent us a great discount code for awesome subscribers. Go to phantomboxing.co.uk if you want to try any of their six styles of boxing gloves, headgear, groin guards, hand wraps, or their Cobra reflex bag. And when you go to the checkout and enter the code COMBATCORP10 to save 10% off any and all purchases. That's COMBATCORP10 for any and all purchases. Thanks again to Phantom Boxing and enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Combat Corporation, your source for combat sports. I'm your host, Al, the Postmaster tomorrow. And today, I have my teammate, Joey, here. So we're going to go after uh, something that we haven't yet done on the channel. It's a couple takedowns uh, from a full Muay Thai clinch for MMA purposes, right? So we got our MMA gloves on here, and uh, I'm really excited. So we're going to go over three particular ones, and we'll also go into a couple different, uh, what's it called, uh, transitions and, you know, a little tips and tricks that we can go through here, right? So, first off, with a tie clinch, especially the MMA, it's kind of underutilized uh, for some reason. One well, of my favorite things to do, just because it's really easy to work your wrestling and your strikes in, you know? If I have a tie clinch, there's dirty boxing, there's good knees, and there's also really good setups and takedowns, of course. Now, there's a bunch of other takedowns that we're gonna go into today. A lot of them will kind of look similar, but they all link into each other, okay? First thing that I teach, is how to actually get into a tie clinch, right? So most of the time in MMA, we'll start out in our stance. Big thing I do is I'll always miss a punch, right? So as I miss the punch, I'm actually reaching over to grab, or I miss over, or I club, just like I would in wrestling. In wrestling, you club really hard to the back of the neck. Now, obviously, I won't club Joey too hard here, but I go here, and that's the idea how I get it. Now, the grip I get, uh, for this is I get my hand over like this. I'll come close. Get my hand over like this. I'll give me the money grip or I have my fingers in if I can. But my favorite one is actually a th three finger grip like this. Okay, so I have my thumb in the middle of my three fingers like this. I always say make the okay sign and then come in. And I like that grip a lot to the back of the neck. It really wrenches it down. And the other thing you wanna make sure is important is you get your elbows in and tight. Okay, because if I just come here and I'm nice and loosey-goosey, right, Joe's gonna pop out and no problem, he'll pop my elbows up, and they're gonna come up, or he's just gonna get his head to the outside and actually get me in a worse situation than he'll probably need me or something on the way out, right? So, nice and tight, right? And we'll ask Joe too how it feels. That tight? Oh, yep. Okay, uh, so if I have this here, I can move Joe really easy just with my upper body by torquing that way, right? So I really want to make sure my elbows are scissored in and I want to make sure I'm framed on his chest here. If you step over, my elbows are framed on his chest to keep him away. All right, so that's the first thing, how I get into it. I either come in, I club like I would in wrestling, right, for grappling purposes, that's really easy, or I miss a shot, right? The other thing I'll do is sometimes I'll step in, you know, here, he wants to fight a little bit, now I'll come up and grab it, maybe get a knee from him, okay? So first takedown I do is actually a pretty standard tie sweep, right? Most of the time you see stuff like this and there's about three variations to this one takedown. Uh, you know, there's things that happen if it doesn't work, if it does work, uh, such and such. But most of the time with tie sweeps, you just kind of see them sweep them and they go back to the neutral corner. It's almost like a knockdown in some ways, right? The only thing about the tie sweep in MMA is that you want to try and follow them down. Maybe, that's up to you. If you want to stand up and maybe you just want to get them off you for a second, that's cool. I tend to follow people down right into a submission attempt or I'll just get down in a position. Maybe I'll, you know, I'll hit them on the mat a little bit, some ground and pound here and there. But this is what I do, right? My very first clinch that actually works for me often when I spar too. Uh, it's very simple, right? I come in, I get my clinch nice and tight on his elbow, stand up nice and tall, right? So Joey's a little bit taller than me, but it still works perfectly, right? But if I'm here, I'm really raking him down, right? I want to see if I can get his head into my shoulder so I can really bounce him. Right? If I'm here, even my chin on top, it works. So I'm here, I miss, I come in, boom. Okay, perfect. First thing I'm gonna do, right, is if he comes in close, he's trying to posture up or something to really stop this from happening. All I gotta do 
for the first sweep is I'm going to, I call it a skip sweep, is I'm going to come in, knee, all right, almost like I'm going to hop, all right, so I'm hopping, and I'm going to throw them and slide them down my knee. So the idea as I'm throwing them, right, is I get that hop just so I can get that effect. It's almost like when we're doing wrestling and you know you hop over to throw them to the side. I'm here, all right, my legs don't need to be loaded back like this, I can even be here, but I like loading it back just a little bit. He obviously knows my rear knee is going to come, but this is what freaks him out, is that skip on the inside, right? And even if he tries to, say, catch my leg, it's perfect, because now he's down already. Because I don't even need to land the knee to get it, but of course it's MMA, you want to try and get something, you know, off. So I don't want to just stand here and then land, right, because at that point, I'm not moving far enough in to get my leverage and my weight on Joe here, right? If I just do this and try and get him down, not so much, right? But I'm gonna stop when I hop in and see if Joe feels the weight difference, right? And you already see him start to topple over. All I have to do is throw him over my knee. He's gonna slide down, right? It's a dump more than it is really a sweep. But check this here. My knee right behind his, right? I'm nice and planted. If I really want this uh, dump to be effective, I'll reach over to the other side and get an underhook like I would in wrestling almost, right? To throw him over here. The only thing is, is that he might try and really club the back of my head. Maybe he's gonna try and hold on. That's perfect. I fall down with him. Now I'm in side control, right? And for me, side control, I always go to a modified headlock first off. Wait, Joey can really feel the weight on his ribs right now, can't he? All right, so. One more time, a skip sweep. There's a couple different variations, right? I'm here, I'm gonna hop, skip, plant it, okay? I don't wanna plant it too far in front of him or really too far behind, there's no such thing. All I have to do is I'm gonna rotate my upper body, right, and rotate him with me. So my arms are still planted. If I really wanna be a jerk, I'll get his head right in my shoulder here. Is that uncomfortable? Right, so we're here. All I'm gonna do here, rotate my upper body, he'll slide right down right into side control, right, and I'm here. I like my modified headlocks a lot, or I'll just get basic side control and try and work from here. Okay, one more time, skip sweep. Okay, here, boom, I can't get it with this. I get the underhook on the other side, squeeze it. Now I really got this set right here, okay? And when you practice these, don't just let them drop. Really work them over your knee, right? Because if I don't put any type of emphasis into getting him down, he's not going to go down. I have to actually throw him, right? I can throw him down just like that, no problem. But obviously wrestling, background for me, I follow down to the mat just about every time. Second sweep is kind of coming from what you'll see a lot with regular foot sweeps in wrestling, but it works from a tie clinch very well as well. Okay, so second takedown, rather. Right? So I get the same thing. My clinch, nice and tight. What I'm gonna do in wrestling is called an inside out, okay? So inside out sweeps work like this. No, no, you're still in a tie. Stands like, like you would in a fight, right? So what I wanna do is pick a leg. He has this leg forward, perfect, right? So I'm attacking whichever leg's in front of me. What I wanna do here, okay? It's called an inside out for this reason. I go inside his leg, I kick it out, okay? He keeps that up, sure, but here's the whole motion. As he's kicking this up, his weight is going back around that way, like a 360. So I'm spinning, okay? I want to use the area of in between my toes, my shin, and hook it right where my ankle is, is the idea. I'm here, I hook it like this, in, now I snap him this way and I'll get him down, right? And now we got your basic sag down into a takedown here. And this is perfect. I can get the handcuff, start pounding him out MMA purposes. I can make his ribs hurt by really squeezing the arm underneath. There's a lot I can do from there, right? And it looks like a silly takedown, but if we do it full speed, right? All I'm doing, I really just sag him down. He went to the mat by himself just from that. But I always like to keep a tight waist or something. Right, and chop that, just like in wrestling, try and keep your arm somehow. And you know, I got back mount too, I can get my rear naked choke. 
I can get an arm triangle, I can get a bunch of things from there. So what you're doing is whichever way you're kicking him out, I kick him out here, that means I'm throwing his head the same way his leg went. Right? And what I want to do actually is use both of my hands underneath, kind of like I'm pushing water away. Right? So, so if I'm here, right? Okay, I'm gonna step in, really whip that back. Okay. Now if he just stands up still, perfect. I got my sag down takedown, I got suplexes from here, I got throws, I got mat returns, I got everything. Okay? But the one thing that you're gonna see, especially if you're going fast, you know, you're hitting, and we go in here, right? And if I do it really quick, he's already down. Right, he was going down himself. Now, say he stays in the same spot, okay? I just do this, and he doesn't like it, and he tries to come back, I got a single leg here, and it's perfect for me. And I even got his arm wedged at the same time. He wants that underhook here, perfect. That's awesome. It just makes it a lot easier for me to actually reach up here and just shut him down from here. I keep the legs pinched. I either go in the half guard or I try a knee slice across back into my modified headlock. Okay, so that variation from that takedown is he doesn't go down or follow with me. I come here, perfect. Single leg is right there. I step up. Keep it pinching between my legs. My favorite single leg finish is I come up higher and push him down lower and I get a cleaver. I call it the cleaver hook, right? Keep this nice and tight. Can you move your leg? Not really, right? Now all I gotta do, I can go into his half guard and be in a neutral position or I can just knee slice across. Okay, so let's go over both real fast. Technically, it's a lot more than three takedowns, but you gotta know how to counteract it. You can't just stop. It's like, oh, that didn't work. You gotta do something else. Same thing, too. If I'm here, right, and he just moves back, last doubles right there, too. I can get a bunch of stuff from there, right? This sweep sets up more than just the sweep itself, right? The other thing that can happen is I can even come inside here higher and land a trip here. There's a lot of things I can do from that position. But the key one that you wanna do for fun, I just noticed my light died, but that's okay. You can see this, right? Perfect. So I come in here, I push, I move behind. There it is, okay? Now from here, simply step in front, arc them down, okay? Last takedown is fairly basic. Really, really basic, actually. All I'm gonna do is a simple snap down from here, okay? Snap downs are easily one of the best things that you can have for any type of grappling sport. Submission grappling's perfect because you got a lot of head and arm chokes that you can get from there, uh, neck, neck chokes in general, and, and you can also get it in wrestling, you score your points, everything is really important for her. MMA is awesome because you can do a lot more. It opens up a thousand opportunities that all end up with you in a good spot. Third takedown from a full clinch, so I'm here, right? So say I want him here and I knee him and he goes back. He's trying to, he knows that I'm probably gonna do that trip, that skip trip that I did earlier. He steps back, perfect. Look where his back went, whoop. Right in here, all right? Now, once again, if you're really strong or if you're an amazing grappler, standing guillotines there, I call it the hangman where I get it, or uh, a gravit choke rather where I get it in the center of my stomach and hip in, right? There's a lot of things that you can do from there, okay? But the key thing is, you wanna see if you can get them trying to go backwards, right? There's nothing like push-pull when it comes to wrestling, grappling, MMA, whatever it might be. If I'm here, I knee him, he goes backwards, perfect. He just lined it up for me. Personally, my, my favorite thing to do are cow catchers, right, or cement mixers. I'll go over this side, right? Cement mixers, that way the camera can see it. And, and I'll go down here, especially for MMA, it's perfect because I still got a guillotine here. Right? I got a mounted guillotine I can hop to and all I gotta do is crank upward with my hips or get the full mount here and now just surf. Okay? I love cow catchers, cement mixers, whatever you wanna call it. But another really simple thing to do, especially for MMA, 
is I'm here, I knee him, he goes forward, I mean backward rather, I snap him, okay, once again we'll go this side for camera purposes. We're here, all I want to do, trap this arm, snap it down, right? Now, for wrestling most of the time you'll get on your weight on them like that, they'll topple right over sometimes, right? Personally, I don't like being on my knees, I always like being up on my toes, heavy chest pressure right on his, on his back, right? A lot of weight on you at the moment in time, right Joe? Yep. All right, so, you know, there's anaconda chokes and everything here. My, my favorite thing to do is just a simple block. I take my right hand, or in this case, we'll do it for the camera. I'll take my left hand and I swim to the opposite side, right? What I'm doing, stopping his shoulder from rotating out. If he tries to grab my leg, now he can do it because my leg, I mean, because my, uh, grab my right leg in this case, right? Because we're going this way. I want to stop the left arm from trying to grab me first. So let go. So I got him down with a snap down. All I'm going to do, put my weight on like this, rotate around. There's a lot of weight in this corner of the shoulder. Try and get your arm out without toppling over. Hard, really hard, right? I'm going to go behind. Now in this case, MMA, you know, there's a turtle ride here. I like because you're pinching them. They try and get up. That's perfect. I just fall back down. Snap, okay? My favorite thing to do here is to bait a leg, actually. He'll, he'll go to grab it, right? Perfect. Now I got his whole arm trapped, right? Or I can be really fancy and hop over for a crucifix, or I can even get the arm bar from here, roll him over Bruce Lee style, crucifix around here, punch him from there, whatever it is you gotta do, right? But snap downs are always a safe bet. So I'm here, I fake it, come into the clinch, okay? I go to knee him, he backs up, I pull him back in. Simple. I'm really snapping all my weight down here. Okay, I down block either which way. We'll go left way so you can see what I'm doing. Hands on his shoulder and on his back. If he takes his arm away from supporting him, he's gonna go down, right? So all I gotta do, walk, walk, Bang. Right here. Now I got a wrestling position. A lot of people like the knee inside for MMA. They can pound out here. He tries to stand up. Perfect. I got this good position. I just push his thigh out. Now he can't move. Boom, boom. I want to pull arm bar from here. Perfect. I got it. I got a bunch of stuff in here. I want to really twist them over. Perfect here. Now I got a complete stretch. Boom. All right. So snap downs are always a safe bet for most people, okay? So going over most of the takedowns one more time. I actually one more snap down variation, my bad. I'm here, backs up, perfect, boom, right? Uh, I like Greco-Roman wrestling personally. I can get a chest grab from here and throw them. Or if I want to be cool for MMA, if I have a really good anaconda or a really good head and arm, all I'm gonna do, swim them out this way, Catch a cradle, now get over here, okay? So if I get the cradle, we'll move over here for a second. I'm really latching this here, right? We'll move his leg out for a second. I'm really latching the arm here, that tight. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I'm here and say, I still have the cradle, perfect. All I gotta do, lock this knee up on the top of his back, and then I'm gonna crank it in and he'll probably tap eventually from the pressure there. If not, I'll just lift this up, okay? And I'll start cranking it this way, and just sit up, and then I'll start pinching the head, or simply get him down here, right? Just drop my shoulder in a certain spot. I'll go right down on his neck. That wasn't fun, was it? No. <laughs> so, they're all things that work pretty well from there. Now, Going over the takedowns again, first one's really simple. There's a lot of variations from it. A skip sweep, right? I come here, I hop, bang, I sweep them down over, laying on knee and belly, side control, whatever it is I want to do. You got a lot of options from there. I go the same thing again. Skip sweep, that doesn't work, perfect. I got a bear hug, perfect right there. Just all I got to do. And that one's really easy to do as well. I knee, all I'm doing is I'm just dropping down, trapping both his arms, right? Second one was 
inside out. So I'm here, bang, move out, push him through the side, come here. I want to be on him the whole time. And I just do a simple drag down, okay? That one's really easy, actually. You'd be surprised how many people you offset with that. Because even if I don't get the takedown, right, and I just want him off me for a second, I'm just gonna move in. And that's perfect. He steps back in, bang. You know, striking purposes, right? The other cool part in this too is that you can really light these up with strikes first, then do it. Blind them a bit. But the last one, probably my favorite one, right? Come a little closer, Joe. Right? I knee him, he steps backwards, I snap him forward. Right? One of my favorite things to do, especially because I like Greco throws and a couple other things from cradle positions. I'm a big fan of Neil Melanson. Right? Is I'm just gonna hop down, grab a cradle, roll back. Right up here, right? I can get a hip lock by bringing my hand on top of his back here, right? And that'll join his knee and his hip. So if I squeeze there, he'll tap, or get my shoulder down in his neck, or half behind, now do it, okay? Either way, there's also a lot of guillotines from there too that you can do. So we'll do that one more time. Guillotines are probably the first thing most people are gonna go for. I come in, I knee him, he backs up, I snap him down, simple. Guillotine, I want to pull guard, I don't really like pulling guard, but hell, I'll pull guard. Okay, I can get an arm in, or an arm out, or celatine, kind of like how I get my elbow up and over, and then hip in. Right, I'm not the best at pulling guard and stuff like that, but there's a lot of things that you can do neck-wise from a snap down. So, those are three takedowns from the full Muay Thai clinch for MMA purposes. A lot of things here are just going to get you into a dominant position whether you finish the fight there or not. It doesn't really matter. If you're finishing on top, you're winning the fight, you're getting points, okay? So, Joe, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next episode.